Hello everyone, Nubkex here. Welcome back to Nub Raids and we have a whole weekend of summoning events coming up. We have a guaranteed champion event and also three, that's right, three different 10 times events over the next three days. It's gonna be intense. Let us dive in. So the first thing you probably want to know is the guaranteed champion. Who can you get if you have enough shards? Well, that champion tomorrow, Friday, July 29th, is going to be the lizard man, the new lizard man, Nekmo Thar, is going to be a guaranteed champion for 15 sacred shards, right? So if you open 15 sacred shards on Friday, you will guaranteed get Nekmo Thar on your 15th shard. What do I think of Nekmo Thar? I've done a video on him before. As we can see, he's got really good base stats across the board. Speed in all battles, which is great. He has an AoE A1, which is a really good chance to place decreased attack. He has an AoE A2, which places decreased speed and leech. Then an AoE A3, sorry, not an AoE attack, but an A3, which gives increased speed to your whole team, 30% turn meter to your whole team, and then gives him an extra turn. So effectively, this guy is a complete monster. I think this guy is insanely good. I am 100% pulling for him. There is zero question in my mind. I think he's just amazing. Effectively, what he does, you throw him into Hydra, and yes, that speed aura can be good. Oh, I forgot to mention, he gets 5% turn meter. Whenever a debuff on an enemy is removed, transferred, or expires, I think also whenever you replace debuffs with like longer duration versions, he gets turn meter, so he's super, super fast. But in Hydra, he comes in turn one, Turn meter, increase speed for your team, gives himself an extra turn, and then he puts decrease speed and leech out as well. Just, just a suite of buffs, a slew of buffs. It's just absolutely nuts. Then the next two turns, he's going to place decrease attack and do AoE hits. And then on his fourth turn, he's back to both of these moves together. I think you do run the two moves together. I think this guy is ridiculously good, like absurdly good. I actually, in my opinion... As you guys know, Lady Kimmy, I do not have her. For the longest time, she's been one of my most wanted champions. Lady Kimmy is considered S tier for Hydra. She gives you increased speed, increased accuracy, 15% turn meter fill, but it's on a four turn cooldown. So it sort of clashes then with her decreased accuracy, decreased speed move. Lady Kimmy's amazing, but a lot of her stuff doesn't really work that well outside of Arena. I actually think for the purposes of Hydra, Nekmothar is just a better Lady Kimmy. The only thing he's missing is decreased accuracy, but you bring in something like a Geomancer who can do it, and you're off, you're away. I think he's better than Kimmy in Hydra, I do. I think he's he brings so much. He is the perfect Hydra champion, absolutely S tier for Hydra. I'd pick him up. For Arena, he's still really good for Arena. He's not as good as Kimmy, though. Kimmy's definitely more useful there with more turn meter stuff and with um, increased accuracy uh, and decreased accuracy. She's better for Arena, but Nekmothar, I think, is better in most other areas. Like, he's just, he's he's god tier. He's a to totally top tier champion. I'm super excited to build him. Uh, he does need a good few legendary books. I'm going to be saving those up and We'll see. Maybe on Tuesday we might have personal rewards CVC. My Nekmo is getting booked then for sure. Now, what are coming with the 10 times events alongside this? Well, on Friday, so the 29th of July, we've got two champions boosted in 10 times. You're going to like these ones. So from the Ancient Shards and Sacreds, so a good chance to get this guy if you're pulling for that Nekmo Thar. Rotos the Lost Groom is in a 10 times event from Ancient and Sacred Shards. He is the best single target nuker in the game overall, I would say. Certainly the best single target nuker for Arena. He's a monster, protects himself with his passive. He hits extremely hard, ignores unkillable block damage, can give himself extra turn. Increases his max HP hugely with Vitality Plunder. Got chance for an extra turn on his A1. Rotos is just disgusting in Arena. So, so strong. Uh, definitely an S tier champion. Something a lot of people are going to want. And then from Void Shards on Friday, Sifi the Lost Ride. 10x for Sifi from Void Shards. If you are close to your Void Mercy, like if you've tracked your Void Shard Mercy, Sifi is definitely worth pulling for. I can't remember. I did a video on this before. Go back and check it to find out exactly how good your chances are. I think it's something like a 25% chance in a 10 times voids that if you pull that champion it's going to be the 10x champion if there's only one i'm not 100 percent sure i'll have to go back and double check but that's such a good chance to get sifi she's such a game changer from doom tower to arena to hydra she's just s tier across the board 
So she's definitely worth going for. Seafy's just nuts. Obviously, the block debuffs, increased defense, increased speed, a little bit of turn meter boost. Great single target revive. That sleep on the passive. Uh, sorry, uh, sleep on her A1. And then a passive, which is pumping out lots of healing and potentially removing fears and freezes from your team. Very useful, this, for Arena. And very useful against that Head of Torment in Hydra as well. Uh, and then, yeah, fully cleanses Rotos. They're such an insane pairing. 80 resist in all battles. Seafy's nuts, 114 base speed. She's she's just an insane champion. Insane. Uh, so again, don't just pull Void Shards randomly hunting for her. That's a waste of your Void Shards. Uh, but if you are close to Mercy, like, I don't know, 20, 20, 30 Void Shards maybe, and you can get a guaranteed Legendary from your Mercy timer, if you have tracked it, I would pull for her. I would. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not there. But uh, yeah, there you go. So that's Friday. Now, Saturday. Uh, excuse me. Sorry, we've got Epics as well. Derp, I misread. I misread. So uh, we've two Epics boosted. So the first one. Oh, this is actually quite fun too. I completely missed this. My bad. So from the Ancients and Sacreds, Senatia is going to be boosted from Ancients and Sacreds. So very good chance you're going to get Senatia. And she's a great champion. She's the uh, HP equalize for your team, which is really, really good. And then heals an ex the targeted ally even more. She has a nice heal here as well that can also put target skills on cooldown then her a1 hits really hard against enemies with less than 50 percent hp if you build her with good attack so like attack ring uh banner uh yeah and lots of crit damage she actually hits really hard with this very very strong and then uh, from voids we're gonna have skull crown boosted as well skull crown boosted too we all know about skull crown good arena aura she gives herself unkillable when her hp drops low then she's got the extra hit against enemies with more than 50 percent hp and then a big hard hitting a2 she's got really good nuking stats one of the best if not the best epic nuker in the game just pumping out aoe damage she stays relevant for forever because of this unkillable buff really really good obviously leorius is better than her um sort of the legendary skull crown plus ethos combo but skull crown is just fantastic i actually use her quite a bit so yeah there you go friday voids is 10x for skull crown and Sifi and ancients and sacreds 10x for senatia and rotos now on saturday on saturday it's the same epics. In fact, it's the same epics the whole way through the weekend. Saturday and Sunday as well. Senatia from Ancient Sacred, Skull Crown from Voids. They're boosted the whole way through the weekend. That's cool. But the legendaries change. So on Saturday, the 30th of July, from Ancients and from Sacreds, we have none other than Sissia Flame Tongue being boosted. Sissia is absolutely incredible. Um, they had a guaranteed event on her before, and I was so glad I got her. She's absolutely amazing. AoE HP burn on her A, A, A3. And then on her A2 AoE attack, we can decrease defense if at least two enemies are burned. But then it instantly activates all the burns on every target and extends those debuffs. So for speed farming, Spider, she just nukes that main Spider because you put out an AoE HP burn, she activates it, and it just nukes that main Spider. She is key to pretty much all the fastest teams for spider 25 just insane for it and then as well for hydra she is nuts in hydra aoe decreased defense and weaken does lots of damage activating these burns she places the burns as well gives herself an extra turn if she places it on all enemies can extend burns on her a1 just a great champion for hydra too really good very similar performance to ninja she's very similar in terms of damage output to a ninja in hydra but then she's also bringing the utility for your team of the weaken and decrease defense, which is really good. So she is absolutely top tier. And then probably no surprise comboed with that 10x from voids is going to be cardial. Again, this is on Saturday, 30th of July, cardial 10x from voids. Another absolute top tier champion. Very similar, I would say, to Sifi in terms of his usefulness. So he's phenomenal in arena, phenomenal in Hydra. Uh, very similar role to Sifi, healing your team cleansing off debuffs, keeping them alive, right? Got a good heal on his A1. Actually does a surprising amount of healing. You'll be very surprised. Increase crit rate, crit damage on your team, and then ally attack. Uh, reduces the cooldown if an enemy is killed. That's cool. But it's like ally attack. This, again, does a lot of damage. It boosts the damage of your team a lot. And it also does healing because he attacks along with it. Then he has a full cleanse with block debuffs, revive on death, uh, and the revive on death cannot be removed. Very, very powerful team cleanse, especially for Arena, also useful in Hydra. Then his passive, take less damage from Demon Spawn, Undead Hordes, Night Revenant. Very good against, you know, Hefrak, Kandrafon, uh, Rotos, uh, all of them, right? There's so many champions here. Hegemon, 
great against all of these things, which is cool. Then he has a 15% chance to join up with an ally whenever they attack. This is what I mean about Hydra. He can solo t heal your team on Nightmare Hydra quite easily because he just keeps joining in those attacks, which is really, really good with this passive. Adds up to a lot more. Always joins in with Sissia. Um, yeah, it's just it's just pretty fantastic. Really good. Uh, yeah, I did a, a video of him. Uh, check out the Cantra. Cantra one key Nightmare Hydra team. We brought in a Cardial. And at the time, I didn't realize how good he was. I was thinking, like, this guy's doing good stuff, but I don't know if he's essential. But I've since heard from lots of people that actually Cardial is a monster. And when they tried replacing Cardial in the team, it still worked, but it wasn't as consistent. Cardial is just super good. So absolutely amazing, champ. Then on Sunday, <laughs> it's another pair. <laughs> You're probably going to know exactly who they are. So Sunday, then we've got the 10x for Karato Fox Hunter from Ancients and Sacreds. Um, this would be the weakest champ boosted from Ancients and Sacreds by a good bit. He's much weaker than Sifi and, uh, and, uh, so not Sifi, uh, much weaker than Rotos, much weaker than Sissia, in my opinion. He's a good champion, but he sort of needs his partner to really go. Triple hitter A1 with weaken, single target stun for two turns on his, uh, A2. If Yumiko is there, he gets an extra turn and resets the skill if he kills an enemy. This becomes very powerful with Yumiko. It's a two-turn stun otherwise without her, which is still a good move. And then his A3 is an AoE uh, that can place block active skills, and it cannot be resisted if Yumiko's on the same team. So it's a little bit wonky in terms of accuracy, like you'll need accuracy to land the stun. With Yumiko, he might use this more for damage, right? Soften them up, and then just start one-shotting them, boom, 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 with Bedevil, because it hits very hard. He's got a really cool passive where masteries um, and passive skills do not affect his damage. So for example... Uh, for example, Duchess, Lilitu, typically decreases AoE damage by 25% for her team. Karato just ignores that, which is pretty big. Now, you need to build his masteries kind of in a weird way. He doesn't get his damage boosted by ally passives or his masteries, right? Uh, so you have to build him in a different sort of way. But the dude hits hard, right? He hits hard. I think he nukes similar to an ethos. Uh, he's got some decent utility, but it might be a little bit awkward to use it. Um, and yeah, crit rate in all battles, 20%. It's a decent aura if you want to use that. Uh, with Yumiko, he becomes much better for sure. Uh, and then, of course, the other champion boosted on the Sunday, uh, again, this is the 31st of July, is Yumiko from Void Shards. I think she is also exceptionally good. I don't know. I would per personally, for me, I would probably be going for the Sifi or Cardial first. Just because they're useful, I feel, in more areas of the game. Yumiko is a monster in Arena, and she certainly opens up Karato to be an S tier nuker. Uh, she's going to be good elsewhere, but not super crazy. I think the best thing elsewhere, she does do this reset thing, which is kind of nifty. But you can kind of just use Renegade and sort of get a similar effect to most of this. But for Arena, she is just nuts in Arena, right? Yumiko comes into the Arena and she puts enemy skills on cooldown, on a three-turn cooldown. It's just phenomenal. This just wins you the Arena fight pretty much straight up. Decreases ally skills as well, so that's very useful too. Uh, she does have some turn meter steel in her A1. Her A2 has a whole ton of effects. It's pretty nice, though. It's a pretty cool um, hex move that when you get a hex out there, she starts to put debuffs over on them. Um, she starts to steal their turn meter if Karato is there, which is cool. Uh, on her passive, again, is very cool, too, uh, where uh, she gets perfect veil at the start of the fight. At the start of arena fight, she's perfect veil. And she's immune to all debuffs while she has perfect veil on. So that's very useful. You cannot debuff her which is part of what makes her so strong. Effectively, she starts the fight with a free immunity set, which means that you can just build her with like good speed and accuracy so that she can come in and land this successfully. And you can't target her directly with that perfect fail. Gives you 15% damage reduction, quite nice. And then she can also steal those buffs when Karato's on the same team, which is actually really useful as well. So like I said, Karato plus her together are gonna rip through Duchess teams, absolutely no problem. I think Yumiko is one of the best champs in the game, uh, but again, personally, I think Cardial and Sifi are also some of the best champs in the game. I think they, they are more useful overall in general. It sort of depends what you need on your account, though, right? If you need help only in the arena or you you know need help in Doom Tower waves, you don't have a good reset champion, you don't have a Kaimar, then Yumiko becomes extremely, extremely good, uh, especially if you got Karato. So there you go. Overall, what are my recommendations for this weekend? These are only 10 times events. They're only 10 times events. I think 10x for Void Champions is pretty good. If you've tracked your Void Mercy timer, 
If you've tracked your mercy system for voids, 200 summons without a legendary, it could be worth going for them. It could definitely be worth going for them. I would probably recommend going for Sifi or Cardial, depends. I think they're both really, really good. Uh, I'd probably lean towards Sifi a bit more, but Cardial is also excellent. Sort of depends on what you prefer. I would lean towards Sifi first, then Cardial, then maybe Yumiko, slight third, but they're all absolutely top tier. If you told me I want to go for for I want to do the complete opposite to you, Nubkex. I would go for Yumiko first, then Cardial, then Sifi. I wouldn't really argue with you. I'd go, you know what? Fair enough. That's that's totally fair. Uh, but I would only go for it if you've tracked your Mercy. I don't think spending Voids uh, without having your Mercy thing built up is a good idea. I'd be saving them up for Guaranteed. That's what I'm doing. Saving for whenever a Guaranteed Void event comes in. Or say for 2x Voids. Void Epics are really good. You don't want to miss out on those. Um... Nekmothar, I would 100% go for him if you got the Sacred Shards. The thing to watch out for, guys, is that the next Fusion should be starting next week. And what are we going to have? Not this weekend, but the following weekend, we're going to have a 2x event for Sacred Shards. So to complete the next Fusion, we're going to have a the two summoning events are going to be 2x Sacreds, and then it's going to be a 10x event. Sacred Shards are the best shards for both of those events, so be careful with your Sacreds. That being said, I think Nekmothar is insane. We don't know what the next fusion is going to be. Maybe we'll hear tomorrow. Stay tuned. Check the channel tomorrow. You can wait to pull your Nekmothar if you're going to go for him or you're thinking about it. Wait until the end of the day so you can check my channel. I will let you know if we hear anything about the next fusion. Haven't heard anything about it yet, but if we do, I will let you know. Uh, I suspect, though... It's going to be a pretty hard job. I would probably give up the next fusion for Nekmothar, to be honest. I think this guy is, like, so freaking good. Uh, I'm, I'd go for him, 100%. Uh, and then you can scrape through the fusion in other ways if you need to. Like, if you got 15 Sacreds and you don't have Nekmothar, I think he's pretty much S-tier speed booster for Hydra. Um, I mean, unless you've got, like, a Sifi and a couple of Kimmies already, you know? Uh, then you're going, like, I don't need him. But uh, for most of us... You need him. He's going to be real good. Uh, and yeah, then I would probably skip the 10x for... Uh, uh, unless you've got your Ancient or Sacred Pity built up, I'd be skipping the 10x for Ancients and Sacreds. Um, obviously, if you're going for Nekmothar, you've got a chance to get Rotos on the Friday, and Rotos is probably the best one. Um, but if I was pulling personally, I'd rate uh, Sissia the highest. I think Sissia is amazing. Amazing for Hydra, Speed Farming, Spider... Sissia, 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 all the way for me. She'd be my favorite of the three uh, three non-void legendaries you can pick up this weekend. Uh, so if I was going to hit Mercy, again, I might pull like 20, 30 Ancients, might pull like... I, I wouldn't pull any Sacreds. I'd probably be saving those for Guaranteed and for the Fusion, to be honest. But that's what I would do. That's what I would do, you know? Um, there you go. They're my recommendations. Let me know what you think. Are you going to be pulling shards? Which days? And for whom? Let us know. I'll be pulling for Nekmo tom tomorrow myself, pretty much first thing. So you can come check my shard pulls. Uh, I'll be hoping for a Rotos. I don't have a Rotos. I would love a Rotos. Don't have a Sifi to go with him. But uh, eh, maybe we'll get Sifi someday. I'd like a Rotos nonetheless. Uh, but yeah, I'll see you all for that. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.